Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome back to the JavaScript course. So now that basics are all clear that why we are learning JavaScript, where we can implement that and all of that thing, let's come to my favorite section where we can actually start writing some code. And before that, obviously we need some tools to make sure that our environment is properly set up. Now I'm gonna give you a few options here. Some of them are compulsory to have, some of them are optional and I'll be walking you through as we go through with them. Now the first option is Node.js. So let me walk you through there one by one. So the first option is Node.js and you should have Node.js installed if you're gonna be walking along with me in this entire series. Now, although I would recommend, now there is a kind of a discrepancy here. Um, I would recommend all of you to have the LTS version. Now LTS stands for long-term support. Now, if you're working on any other project like React or maybe Angular, you might need a Node version for it and you might want to get a refresher of JavaScript through this course. So for those all people, I would recommend uh, this LTS version that is long-term support. Now you can also have the latest feature support, but latest features sometimes can a little bit like break down sometimes, not for our course. It's not gonna break up at, at all at any point of time but there can be chances that you're working on some other projects and going with that, so that can break out a few things. So in case you are just working on this series at all and you're not using anything like React or Angular or Electron, anything at all, then you can also go for this current version as well. Now it happened to be that I am working on some other projects as well and for that I require this current version here so my system is installed with this current version. But again, for all of you, I would recommend you to go through with this. Now this is available for all the platforms and of course Node is really popular. You have the source code version, you have Windows installer, you have Mac installer. So everything is covered up and we have additional libraries for others in case you are interested in that as well. Now it's a pretty simple install for Windows and for Mac guys, it's just next, next, I agree, I do. We always do that, all of the stuff. Now once you have done that, open up your terminal or command prompt and then just type this. Let me zoom that, that is node-v. And notice there is a node space then hyphen V. And once you run that, you will be getting some number. Now, regardless what number you get, uh, make sure you get a number and that's the installation done. Now with this, you'll also be having an NPM and that is also when you apply a space hyphen V, it should return you some number. Now we are not gonna be talking about what is node or we will not be extensively using node for our this course because node is completely a separate thing. But in order to run some of our JavaScript file, we may need it, so I highly recommend to have it here. Now, as long as you're getting any number here, that's totally fine for this entire series. We are not dependent on any kind of particular version of Node. It just needs to be there. Okay, so this is our first dependency that we need to have, and I always recommend that you should have it. Now, the next version or the next dependency is the code editor. Now the code editor choice depends on highly uh, how much you are into web development. People do have strong choices for that. And I totally respect that. Whatever the choice you are having, uh, just give it a go. Maybe you are a big fan of Sublime Text that can also work absolutely fine for this course, no problem at all. You can also work on Atom, uh, that is also great editor. And you can also work on Visual Studio Code. All of them are cross-platform available for all Mac and Windows, so you can go ahead and pick them whatever you like. If you already have a preference or anything others as well, that's also totally fine. What I'll be using for this entire series is gonna be Visual Studio Code. Now, I was a big fan of Sublime Text. I still have, I still have Sublime Text all the time in my system, but I thought let's give it a try to some others editor as well, because until and unless you're gonna be trying anything else, how you can say that it's bad or it's worst, or it may be good. So I tried Sublime Tech for long, long years, then I moved into Atom for recent couple of years, and then um, for this series, I'm gonna give it a try for Visual Studio Code. Okay, so that is also a compulsion. And also for the browser, I would be using Chrome throughout this. If you're a Firefox fan, I would highly recommend that at least for this series, go ahead and get started for Chrome. At least that's what I'll be using here. Now there is also an optional setup that you can use, but uh, there are some things that you should take care of that. Now there is one amazing website known as JSBin. A lot of people just like to work on the go with these videos, so you can also work on that. Mostly we will not be using the HTML, we'll be using the JavaScript and the console most of the time. But here are a few things that I would like to mention here. Now when you're working on some product or you're learning something really good, I highly recommend to not to learn it on to some unreliable systems. 
And by the term unreliable, I simply mean that if you have your own system, computer or a desktop, or maybe a laptop, whatever that is, you need to have all the tools installed because the product that you'll be building up needs a very stable environment. And that stable environment is your computer and not these online tools. Yes, there are various other mobile applications as well that where you can type your JavaScript code, it can run all of that. But I, I would say that, hey, please, uh, as much as possible, please avoid that for at least this series because we are not learning anything which is toy apps or toy things. These are like full-fledged things that we are going to be learning in this course. So my recommendation is use JSBin uh, like for some understanding of the concept or a few quick implementation of the code, but not for the full-fledged application development. For the development, systems are always good and that's why everybody is still on laptop and desktop and creating these amazing things which are highly scalable. Okay, so that's it. Uh, these are the few things. So go ahead, download them. And from the next video onwards, we can start writing some code. Node.js is going to be the thing which you should have. For the editor, I'll be using the VS Code. And for the browser, I'll be using the Chrome. You can optionally use JS bin for some of the quick testing of the things. But most of the time, I would recommend you to write the code in a text editor so that you can get a feel at how actually things are done. So these are all the tool requirements and yes, enough of the theory, everything is already done. Now we can move on to our Visual Studio code and can write some code. So let's do that in the next video.